think that's it. Now, uh, let's get into the news of the day because we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week because I don't think we had an Albertan available to do the stream to talk about it. But our friends at the Alberta Prosperity Project, they did a full debate and they had uh, Dr. Dennis Modry, who is the top dog over at APP, and our Ezra Levant asking the questions in the debate. And so there were the three front runners. Well, I guess the fourth front runner wasn't there because he's scared of the CBC. So we had Daniel Smith and we had Todd Lowen and Brian Jean. And these guys absolutely roasted Ottawa. Um, they were, as Ezra said in the morning meeting, talking like pundits instead of uh, politicians, which I think is probably better because it's a little bit more candid. Um, I like how they call us a right-wing media group in the CBC article. And that, so they were talking about, um, there, there were some really good questions about what's the or else instead of strongly worded letters to Justin Trudeau every time he stomps all over things that are should be within the purview of the province's rights. Um, Danielle Smith proposed um, you know, doing as much as we can within Confederation to fix the relationship with Ottawa before we pull the shoot. Uh, I think Todd Lowen's sort of of the same mindset. And Brian Jean was like, no, we have to work with Ottawa. Um, and that didn't get him a lot of great responses from the crowd, but he did have some good ideas. And kudos to all three of them, by the way, for showing up because the media was pressuring them. I know the party was pressuring them not to go. Um, some of their other inconsequential fellow candidates for the leadership of the UCP also pressuring them not to go with malicious lies, by the way. Um, so they went and more importantly than anything in all of this, you have to talk to Albertans if you want to lead them. And I've seen polls right now that show that more Albertans than Quebecers right now are expressing some form of separatist sentiment. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, but maybe it means uh, we want to leave the country, be our own country, join the United States, have some sort of sovereignty association, be recognized as a distinct society like Quebec is. Maybe we need to execute the firewall letter, uh, the historic firewall letter. We Maybe we need to uh, have our own police force, run our own pension plan, collect our own taxes. Whatever that means, more Albertans want that right now than Quebecers who currently have much of that relationship. So to discard these people as fringe radicals is bad idea, Jeans. Um, but you are, Sid, I want to ask you about this because I'm a lifelong Albertan. So I've seen separatism come and go in waves. Um, and I think Stephen Harper sort of extinguished the idea of separatism all across the country. Quebec didn't want to leave all of a sudden, and neither did the West when Stephen Harper got elected, because he sort of rejigged the relationship with Quebec, and the West wanted in. That was our thing. We wanted in. We wanted to have, you know, this footing within the country where people would understand our financial contributions to, uh, to Confederation, and Stephen Harper recognized that. So that sort of extinguished the separatist movement before, but it's back with vengeance as it normally is when there's a Trudeau in power. Um, you've, you know, you are a transplanted Torontonian. So when you hear people like Leela Ahir, who's running to be the leader of the United Conservative Party, and many of those people in the room at the APP event, those are UCP voters. Like they're not separatists. You don't go to... Sorry, I, I, let me correct myself. They are unwilling, probably, separatists. They are people who love the province, probably love the country, but feel pushed out. And they are interested in what UCP leadership hopefuls have to say about this. So they're not quite ready to leave. They are willing to cast a vote for the UCP, which seems to be a federalist party. Um, what do you think about how, you know, those people are being talked about in the media and by Leela Ahir, who's also running to lead the UCP, calling them, you know, sort of extremist, homophobic nonsense. 
Uh, well, I think the media does the uh, separatist movement a disservice, to say the least. And it's part I think and it part does because... a disservice, actually, because every time the media talks, it just grows. <laughs> Sorry, I, I've been talking no, too no. much. Go ahead. No, no, that's okay. Um, like, from a, a Torontonian perspective, like, you hear about, let's say, equalization is one of those things. Like, from the GTA, no idea what that means. Equalization, is it's... There's just a word to it, but then when you Sounds come good, here and you right? come, <laughs> well, you know, uh, it, it it's open to question. But in once you come here to Alberta and you see the people and you talk to them and you find out a little bit more about the issues that they're advocating for, uh, you really do see that they've been given the short end of the stick for a very long time. Uh, and you find out about situations like equalization, and you realize that it isn't. And like a lot of the people, uh, the sentiment that you uh, alluded to, where it's we don't want to. But it's on the table. Um, that's kind of the approach that I think a lot of people have here because of uh, the long line of uh, uh uh, disrespect that they've received from Ottawa, basically. And from coming to Alberta from Toronto, I now share that sentiment as well. Yeah, it's funny. There's a lot of transplanted people who come to Alberta for the same the same reason generations and generations and generations of people, including my ancestors, came to Alberta. It's for opportunity. It's for space. Um, it's to make it's your for prosperity. Way, for prosperity to make your way in the world in the way you want to do it. Um, exactly. So for the freedom too. Um, and so there are a lot of people, recent transplants to Alberta who get here and they're like, holy heck, we had no idea. Where do we sign up to this uh, getting more autonomy business? Um, Tariq El Naga is a great example of that. He, um, our friend Tariq El Naga, he ran for the Maverick Party. He's a transplant to the country. He came out, to, to, came out west, fell in love with cowboy culture and realize we're getting a raw deal from the rest of the country. Now, most people don't want to leave. Most people in Alberta see themselves as Canadians, but they feel like there's my friend Tariq El Naga. Boy, don't we look good? That's at the APP event. Um, you know, it's shocking. I, I clean up okay, but so does Tariq. So, <laughs> um, you know, like a lot of people come here and they have no idea that we, for example, pipelines is a huge issue. We... You know, like people who are, you've been working, you've been learning a lot on the energy file as since you've come to Alberta. And, you know, if you, from the outside, if you consumed all your information from the mainstream media, this is just a uh, pump jack riddled wasteland, you know, like Bakersfield, California, by the way. Hi, that was a clip from our Rebel Daily live stream. It's hosted Monday, Wednesday, and Friday by the big boss man Ezra Levant, and Tuesdays and Thursdays by me, Sheila Gunn-Reed, and my good friend David Menzies. On the live stream, we talk about the news of the day, we show some videos, and we interact with our viewers at home. We stream at 12 noon Eastern, 10 Mountain. You can find us on YouTube, Rumble, Super U, and Odyssey.